Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we will cover everything you need to know for the upcoming test. So we'll go through each of the topics listed here, the blue ones being algebra, black equations, and green index laws. So let's get into algebra. So we're going to start with some definitions. So each of these things here, 4xy, negative 3z, and plus 1, they are called terms. When you have a whole heap of terms separated by plus and minus signs, we call that an expression. If you have an equal sign, it becomes an equation. So what makes up each of these terms are letters called pronumerals or variables because their value varies from question to question, and the number in front of those letters is called a coefficient. So if you see a term that does not have any variables, no letters, a number by itself, we call that a constant term. All right, let's get into substitution. So substitution is where you're assigning to each variable a value and you substitute that, you exchange the variable for that value in an expression. So for this expression here, this means A times B over 2. If you don't see any operation between pronumerals, it always means times. So the value of this expression will be A times B divided by 2. So I'm just exchanging A for minus 5 b for negative 4. So negative times a negative is always a positive. This becomes positive 20 over 2, which is equal to 10. So for this one down here, it will be the square root. I'm going to exchange a for negative 5 and exchange b for negative 4. We need to put brackets around the negatives here because we're squaring the whole thing. So negative 5 squared is positive 25. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So this is just the square root of 25 minus 16, square root of 9, which is equal to 3. And we're done. Let's now move on to operations with terms. So remember that terms are just sequences of numbers called coefficients and letters called pronumerals or variables. So when we're multiplying or dividing terms, it's actually pretty easy. All we do is multiply or divide the coefficients. See, these operations are easier because we don't need to worry about whether or not the terms are like terms. So for 6a times negative 3b, I just go 6 times negative 3, positive times a negative is a negative, and then I write the pronumerals. So for 42z minus 6, might be easier to write it as a fraction. So 42 divided by 6 is 7, and then I write the pronumeral. So this one here is a little trickier. Once again, I'm going to write it as a fraction, 18cd over 24c. Now, if you have a fraction and the same pronumeral is on the top and bottom, you can cross it out. So simplifying 18 over 24, the highest common factor of 18 and 24 is 6. Divide 18 by 6, divide 24 by 6, and there's still a d on top, and we're done. Let's look at adding and subtracting. So adding and subtracting terms is a little more difficult because you can only add or subtract if they're like terms. So terms are like terms if they have the same pronumerals, the same sequence of letters. So when you're adding or subtracting like terms, you just add or subtract the coefficients. So 7x minus x. These two terms are like terms. They both have an x. Now, x is the same as 1x because timesing something by 1 doesn't change its value. So for this, I just go 7 minus 1. I just subtract the coefficients and get 6x. If you had 7x's and I took away 1x, you now have 6x. Sometimes you'll have to simplify an expression like this. You have to identify the like terms. So this term here and this term here, they are like terms because they both have an a. They have the same pronumerals. But this term here is not 3a, it's negative 3a. So I go 8a subtract 3a, which gives me 5a. So now 2b and negative 5b, they are like terms as well because they both have a b. So 2 subtract 5 is negative 3, and then I just write the pronumeral. So I can't simplify this expression here anymore because this term and this term are not like terms. This one has an a, this one has a b. Different letters, not like terms, can't simplify, I'm done.
So let's look at this expression here. So it turns out this term and this term are like terms because they both have one M and one N. It doesn't matter that the pronumerals are written in a different order because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So 12MN minus NM is just 11MN. Doesn't matter the order in which you write the pronumerals. So this term here and this term here are like terms. So negative 7 subtract 5 is negative 12. And once again, we just write the coefficient and the pronumeral. Now, I can't simplify this any further. These two terms are not like terms because this one has an N and this one doesn't. Can't simplify further, so I'm done. All right, let's now move on to expanding brackets. So expanding brackets is when you have a set of brackets, you end up with something that doesn't have brackets. You're using the distributive law. You need to remember to distribute the thing outside the brackets to everything inside the brackets. So for this first one, I need to go two times X, but I also need to remember to distribute the two to the five. I need to go two times five, which gives me positive 10. So here, negative seven times Y is just going to give me negative seven Y, and then I I go negative 7 times negative 3. This is a negative 3. Negative times negative gives me a positive, and then I'm done. So sometimes you'll get something like this where you have to expand and simplify. So expanding the first bracket, 8 times x, 8 times negative 5. Now I'll expand the second set of brackets, negative 3 times 4. Negative times positive is a negative, and negative 3 times negative x, not a positive x, it's a negative x, negative times negative again gives me a positive. So now I can simplify this expression here because there are like terms. 8x and 3x are like terms, 8 plus 3 is 11, and negative 40 and negative 12, they're like terms. We can just subtract those numbers and I get minus 52, and then I'm done. All right, let's now look at the opposite of expanding, which is factorizing. So whereas expanding was when I started with brackets and ended up without brackets, factorizing is the opposite. I'm going to start with an expression like this, and I'm going to end up with brackets. So to do that, I write the highest common factor out the front, and inside the brackets divide each term by that highest common factor. So for this here, the highest common factor of 8x and 24 is 8. So I write that out the front. So in the brackets, I divide. 8x divided by 8 is x. Another way to think of that is, what do I times by 8 to get 8x? Well, you times by x. What do I times by 8 to get positive 24? And that's plus 3. So expanding and factorizing undo each other. If I were to expand my answer, I would get what I started. So how do I do something like this? Well, this time, the highest common factor is going to involve a letter and a number. So the highest number that goes into 12 and 20 is 4. But both of these terms, this one and this one, also have an A in common. That's what I mean common. They both have it. So what do I times by 4a to get 12ab? Well, I need to times by 3 to get to 12, and then I also need to times by b to get 12ab. What do I times by 4a to get negative 20a? Well, I need to times by negative 5, and then I'm done. Once again, if I were to expand this, I'd end up with this. All right, so this one here looks a bit tricky. So here, the highest common factor is just a number. So the highest number that goes into 15 and 25 is 5. So what do I times by 5 to get to 15x? Well, I need to times by 3 to get to 15 and x to get 15x. What do I times by 5 to get negative 25z? Well, I need to times by negative 5 to get negative 25 and z as well. All right, this last one here. So this one looks like it's asking us to expand, but we're actually not going to expand. We're going to factorize it. See here, the thing common to both terms is this thing in brackets. A plus 3 is common. So what I do is I'm going to write A plus 3 out the front. That's the highest common factor, the thing that's common to this and this. All right, what do I times by A plus 3 to get 8 times A plus 3? Well, of course, I'm just going to times by 8. What do I times by A plus 3 to get negative 5 A plus 3? Well, here, a plus 3 has been times by negative 5. So, of course, 8 minus 5 is just 3. So, the answer I get is 3 
times a plus 3. I can move that 3 to the front because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So when you're factorizing, you're writing the expression as something times something. All right, that's all for algebra. Let's move on now to equations. So as I said on the very first slide, equations are where you have an equal sign. What we do with equations is we solve them. We want to find a value that we can substitute for the pronumeral, usually x, to make the statement true. So how do you find that value? that you substitute for x. You undo what has been done to x or whatever the pronumeral was in the opposite order to bid mass and make sure you follow this rule. What you do to one side, you must do the other. So let's look at this equation here. Now, because of bid mass, we multiply first. So x has been multiplied by negative seven and then 20 has been added. This is a positive 20. So when I'm going to solve it, I undo things in the opposite order. It's like in the morning, you put on your socks first then your shoes. But at night, you take off your shoes first because they're the last thing that you put on. So here, adding 20 was the last thing I do. It's the first thing I undo. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides because 20 and subtract 20, they undo each other. So what I'm left with is negative 7x equals now 6 subtract 20 gives negative 14. So when I get to this stage, I've got x times by negative 7. The way you undo timesing by negative 7 is divide by negative 7. We're not dividing by positive 7. We're dividing by negative 7. This negative belongs to the x. It didn't go anywhere when we subtracted 20. So negative 14 divided by negative 7 is 2. Here the solution is x equals 2. Times in negative 7, divide negative 7, undo each other. So the answer is 2, because if I substitute x for 2, I get 20 minus 14 equals 6, which is a true statement. Because I've checked my answer, I know I'm right. So let's look at these two equations. They look very similar. The only difference is the order of operations. And you'll see we're going to get a totally different answer. So here, what we've done to x is add 8 first, then divide by 5. So because dividing 5 is the last thing I did, it's going to be the first thing I undo. So be careful here. When people times in fractions like this by 5, they think we times the x and the 8. We don't do that. See, the reason that we're timesing by 5 is times 5 and divide 5 undo each other. So I'm left with x plus 8 equals 1 times 5 is 5. So now the way I undo adding 8 is I subtract 8. If I subtract 8 from one side, I need to subtract from the other. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So plus 8 and minus 8 undo each other. I'm left with x is equal to minus 3. That's the solution. If I substitute x for minus 3 here, I get a true statement. Negative 3 plus 8 divided by 5 does equal 1. That's a true statement. I know I'm right because I checked it. So here, unlike the one up here, we divided by 5 first. So up here, we added 8, then divided 5. Here, we divide 5 first, then add 8. So because adding 8 is the last thing done to x, it's the first thing I undo. I'm going to first subtract 8 from both sides. Plus 8, minus 8, undo each other. So I'm left with x over 5 equals now 1 subtract 8 is negative 7. So I've got x divided by 5. The way I undo dividing 5 is times by 5. As I said before, don't times this thing here by 5. See, divide 5 and times 5 undo each other. So I'm just left with x equals negative 35. That's the answer because negative 35 divide 5 is negative 7 plus 8 equals 1 gives me a true statement. So I got totally different answers when the order of operations changed. So you need to make sure when you're solving equations, you do things in the correct order. So now let's look at equations with the pronumeral on both sides. 
So these equations are all a little different because they have the pronumeral on both sides of the equal sign. So here you just need to do a little more work. You expand any brackets if there are any. Now what you do after that is subtract from both sides the pronumeral with the lowest coefficient. So the problem with these equations, we really only know how to solve equations when x is in one spot and one spot only. So if we have x like in more than one spot, we need to first get x to one spot and then we solve as normal. So for this equation here, x is on both sides. This one here has the lowest coefficient, the lowest number in front. So I'm going to subtract 7x from this side. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So on the left hand side, 7x minus 7x, they cancel out, you get zero. So I'm left with nine equals 10x minus 7x is 3x and I've still got my minus six there. So now what I do is add six to both sides. I'm gonna solve like normal, you know how to do this. Now I divide by three, x equals five. That's the solution. If I substitute x for five here, and here I get a true statement. Seven times five plus nine is 44. 10 times five minus six is 44, true statement. So what would I do here? Well, I have an x here and an x here. The coefficient of this x is actually negative 1, whereas here it's positive 1. So I'm going to subtract negative x, uh, which is the same as actually adding x to both sides. If I add x to both sides, I will get rid of x on this side because subtracting and adding x undo each other. See, if I add x to both sides, I end up with 5 equals 17 plus 2x. Now I have an equation where x is only in one spot. So I'm going to subtract 17 from both sides and divide each side by 2. And I get x equals minus 6 and I'm done. So if you have x on both sides of the equation and you have brackets, you first need to expand the brackets. So let's expand the brackets. So 8 times x... 8 times 3, and for the moment, I'm going to leave the 2x there. On the right-hand side, 11 times x and 11 times 2. So now I'm going to collect like terms. 8x plus 2x is 10x. I can't add the x's to the 24. They're not like terms. So on the left-hand side, I've got 10x plus 24. On the right-hand side, 11x plus 22. So now that I've expanded the brackets, I'm going to subtract the x with the lowest coefficient. That's this one here. 10 is lower than 11. So if I subtract 10x from both sides, 10x minus 10x is just 0. These two cancel out. So what I'm left with is 24 equals... Now, 11x minus 10x is just x. I can't subtract 10x from 22 because they are not like terms. I leave the 22 alone. So 24 equals x plus 22, subtract 22, I get x equals 2, and I'm done. All right, let's now look at some worded problems. So when you want to solve a worded problem using equations, first define a variable. So that means what you do is let x or whatever letter you like, you let it be whatever you're trying to find. That's the first step. Second step, form an equation, and then you solve it as normal. So we'll start with an easy one. Four is added to a number, the result is tripled. The answer I get is 33, what was the original number? So because I'm asked what is the original number, I'm gonna let x be the original number. So step one is done, I have defined a variable. Step two, I'm gonna turn this worded information into an equation. So four is added to a number and the result is tripled. The answer I get is 33. So I'm now going to do step three and solve this equation. So I'm going to expand the brackets, three times x, three times four. Then I'm gonna subtract 12 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 3. x equals 7. The original number is 7. Because when you add 4 to 7, you get 11. 
Triple that, you get 33. All right, so I've checked my answer. I know I'm correct. So let's do this example here. James and Daniel have played tennis on 36 occasions. James has won eight times more than Daniel. How many times has each player won? So this one's a bit harder because there are two unknown quantities. We want to find how many times James has won and how many times Daniel has won. So we're still going to follow this process here. But when we're defining variables, we need to use the same letter for both quantities. So my advice when you're solving a worded problem involving more than one unknown quantity is let x be the smaller quantity. So here the smaller quantity is the number of times Daniel has won. So when I say you need to use the same variable, I'm not going to let y be the number of times James has won. I'm going to write it in terms of x. See, James has won however many times Daniel's won plus eight more times. So I've defined both variables. Now I'm going to form an equation. So the number of times Daniel's won plus the number of times James has won needs to equal 36 because they've played 36 times. So collecting like terms, x plus x is 2x. I get 2x plus 8 equals 36. So you know how to solve these now. Subtract 8 from both sides and divide each side by 2. I get x is equal to 14. Now remember, x was how many times Daniel has won. So what I've actually found is Daniel has won 14 times. James has won 8 more times, so he's won 22 times. Notice that 14 plus 22 equals 36, so I know I've done something right. All right, let's now move on to indices. So you've seen something like this before. We read this as 4 to the power of 5. So we call this number here the power or index, so the plural of index is indices, and we call this number being raised to the power, we call that the base. So you probably already knew before this year that this means you multiply this number by itself this many times. 4 to the power of 5 means 4 times itself 5 times. So writing it like this, we call expanded form, and this is index form, something to the power of something. So there are four index laws that you need to know. So the first two are here. This one says when you multiply bases, so A is the base, B and C the powers. When you multiply bases, you add the powers and keep the same base. When you divide bases, you keep the same base and subtract the powers. So let's look at some examples. So if I was doing this one here and I wanted to write it in index form, I keep the same base and add the powers. If I'm dividing, Dividing bases, here 3 is the base, I keep the same base and subtract the powers. So when you have something like this, people get a bit mixed up as to what is a base and what is a power. So 6 and 5, they're bases. We can just multiply 6 and 5 the way we've always done. 6 times 5 is 30. So x squared times x to the power of 7. Well, they follow the same index law that we were using up here. x squared times x to the power of 7, keep the same base and add the powers. So when you get something that looks like this, remember fraction line means divide. So 36 and 4 are bases. We can just divide them like normal. 36 divide 4 is 9. Now, a to the power of 8, divide a to the power of 3. You keep the same base and subtract the powers. b to the power of 6, divide b. b, remember, is the same as b to the power of 1. So, you keep the same base and subtract the powers. 6 minus 1 is 5. So, when you have different bases, do them separately. Notice I did the A's separately and then the B's separately. All right, let's look at the last two index laws that you need to know. So, this next index law is called the power to a power rule. It's when we have a power and we raise to a second power. The index law is you keep the same base and multiply the powers. So, 7 to the power of 4 to the power of 5. Here we keep the same base. We don't add these two powers together. We multiply them. 4 times 5 is 20. So, this works also for pronumerals. x to the power of 3 to the power of 8. Keep the same base and multiply the powers. So, what about this last example? Well, that's a bit tricky. What we need to do is raise everything in the brackets to this power. So, I raise 2 to the power of 4 
Now I'm going to raise x squared to the power of 4. How do I raise x squared to the power of 4? Well, you're raising a power to another power. So we keep the same base and multiply the powers. 2 times 4 is 8. So note 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So this is just 16x to the power of 8. All right, for our final topic, let's look now at the zero index. So let's say I have 2 to the power of 4 divide 2 to the power of 4. Well, I just told you 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So this is 16 divided by 16, and anything except 0, when divided by itself, gives 1. But what we just learned on an earlier slide is if you have a base divided by the same base, you keep the same base and subtract the powers. So this thing here equals 2 to the power of 0, but it also equals 1. So the only way this can be true is if 2 to the power of 0 equals 1. In fact, this would work for any base other than 0. So 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 5 to the power of 0 is 1, negative 20 to the power of 0 is 1. This rule here says anything except 0 when raised to the power of 0 is 1. 0 to the power of 0 is undefined, but anything else to the power of 0 is 1. 7 to the power of 0 is 1. So, 2 times 7 to the power of 0, what would that be? Well, remember, bid mass means you do brackets first, then index, then division and multiplication. We actually do raising to a power before multiplying. So, this would be 2 times 7 to the power of 0 is 1, so 2 times 1, which is 2. So this thing here, now we've brought in brackets, we do what's in the brackets first. Now we would do 2 times 7 first. So 2 times 7 is 14, and then we raise to the power of 0. But I said anything except 0 to the power of 0 is 1. 14 to the power of 0 is 1. This answer is 1. So how do we do this last one here? Well, what we have to do is brackets first. So 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm going to leave the first 3 alone. 3 times 2 is 6. Raise that to the power of 0. So next operation I need to do is raising to a power. So 6 to the power of 0 is 1. And 2 to the power of 0 is also 1. So now I'm left with 3 plus 1 plus 3 times 1. 3 plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 7. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video and best of luck studying for the exam, but I believe in you. You'll ace it. You're a superstar. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.